Have you ever wondered how you are going to get your child to learn their multiplication facts? Seems like a rite of passage as a parent, right? To struggle with teaching your child how to get their math facts down. Stick around. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge. Here you can find the ideas and resources you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. I'm going to share with you a thought from a parent recently. She writes, I'm homeschooling my daughter this year, grade six, and I have found that she is struggling with her math facts to the point where we really can't progress much until she gets to a place where she can recall them from memory. What fun ideas or games do you use to practice facts that we can do for only 10 or 15 minutes a day? I don't want to use only flashcards and bore her to death. Now, most of us as adults have some memory of learning our math facts when we were in school. Sometimes that's a bad memory. Sometimes we have good memories about that. But whatever the case may be, we still don't want to struggle through it a second time with our own children. Now, I have been a public and private school teacher, and I have tutored privately since leaving teaching and homeschooling my own children. My oldest son, in fact, is in fifth grade, so we do plenty of multiplication during the day. I'm going to share with you some of these ideas that have worked not only for my children, but other children that have come to me for tutoring. But before I get started, make sure you click like and subscribe so you can be notified each time I upload a helpful video for your child's education. There's a strategy to this, so I'm going to share with you how to make the most of your time. Number one, find out which facts are the most difficult ones for your child. I'll bet that if you are saying your child is struggling, they're probably not struggling with their twos facts. They're probably not struggling with their fives facts. So two simple ways that you can find out exactly which facts they are struggling with. One way is to print off a page of about 100 facts that are mixed all the way from the zeros up to the 12s. Now, one website I like to go to for that is math-drills.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. But what I like about that is if I want to take the zeros facts out of there, like if I know they're too easy for my child, I can do that and still go all the way up to the 12s. And if I'm giving that to my child, yes, I know some children don't want to do 100 facts at a time. So if I'm just finding out which ones my child knows and which ones are more difficult for my child, I might just say, answer the ones you know, skip the ones that you don't know. And then I have my answer. As long as they got the ones they they wrote down correct, then it's just the ones they left blank that they don't know. And I'm not timing them when I'm giving them this diagnostic test. It's just a worksheet, but I'm calling it a diagnostic test because it's letting you know which ones they don't know. Now, the other way that you can do that is if you do have a stack of flashcards that covers all the facts, you can go through those with your child. It doesn't have to be all in one sitting. It can be, you know, over time, but just find out which ones they know or don't know. If they hesitate, if they take too long to answer, or if they say the incorrect answer, Just set it off in a stack by itself. You can even have them say, I don't know. My dad was a math teacher, and he used to say, I don't know is a good answer (laughs) when he was teaching us in math class because it saved time. If you know you don't know, then you can get on with the business of learning how to do it. So two simple ways, give a worksheet, let them skip over the ones they don't know, or use math fact cards and just make a sort to find out which ones are the most difficult because those are the ones that you're going to want to study and find strategies of remembering them. Hi parents, is your child struggling to read or even hates to read? Nothing you have tried has worked? Get my free guide, five quick tips to immediately help your struggling reader. I'm gonna show you the simple tricks that I've used for years to successfully improve children's reading and their confidence in reading. It's easy, it's simple, and it's free. Just go to theparentteacherbridge.com slash reading help. You can find that link in the description below. The second thing you wanna do is to keep track of the ones that they are supposed to learn and the ones they are slowly learning as you go about. 
One way you can do that is to have a multiplication chart or a multiplication table. It could even be something as simple as a list of the facts. I'll include some of these for you to look at, but most of these can be found very easily online that are free, printable. You can even color code them if you want. If your child knows all their twos, all their ones, maybe even all their fives and tens, go ahead and color them something like green because they already know them. You don't have to spend time on them. And you may want to leave the ones they don't know blank. And then as they learn them, color them in. That way you can show progress. Your child may not be able to learn all the facts within a month, but they should be able to show some reasonable progress within a month. And having something printed out keeps you focused and it keeps your child encouraged. Number three, sort the ones that you want to practice first. I usually look for patterns to see what are the easiest ones that they can learn out of the ones that they don't know, which are the easiest ones they can learn so that I can give them a taste of success. Here are a few things that you may wanna point out. The commutative property. So if your child knows the threes, they probably know three times five, but you can make sure that they also know that's the same as five times three. So go through and look for those patterns out of the ones they know and the ones that they don't know. You can also look at relationships and doubling. For instance, the fours facts are kind of hard for children, but if they know they're twos, they know that two times seven is 14. If two times seven is 14, then four times seven, because seven is the same, and four is just the same as doubling two, then your answer would be 14 doubled. The two got doubled, the seven stayed the same, so the 14 gets doubled. Two 14s would be 28. Now, that's not going to be memorizing it right off, but understanding some of those strategies will help your child understand some of those relationships. You can also find similar relationships in the twos and the fours. The threes and the sixes, what about... If you know three times two is six, then six times two would be double that amount, which is 12. Another thing you can point out, uh, say for example with the nines, is that they are almost 10. So if your child does not know uh, six times nine, I think to myself, okay, this is my little think cloud, uh, six times 10, I know what that is. The tens are easy. I know that that's 60. So six times nine has got to be less than 60, something under 60. Well, it's going to be six less. Here I have 10 sixes. Here I have nine sixes. So if you're at 60, go back six or subtract six, which is 54. Now there are also some other nines patterns such as 54 is six times nine, five times nine is 45, four times nine is 36, three times nine is 27. Do you see this pattern going down here? Two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven. You can go through all the nines multiples and look at some of those patterns. Number four, choose your method of regular practice. So this mom that wrote, she was not interested in the idea of flashcards, but you can certainly use flashcards, you can use apps, you can use copying the facts, just be sure that they are copying them correctly. You don't want someone to copy a fact 50 times, that's incorrect. Okay, so one idea that I use with flashcards, instead of buying the store-bought flashcards, I have my children make their own flashcards. I have a video about that. I'm going to link it. Be sure you take the time to watch that. And one of the things we do at home with flashcards is we will quiz each other. Like I'll take the deck and half it. You take half, I take half. I ask you some, you ask me some. Because believe it or not, when your child is asking you and quizzing you, they are still learning. Then you can swap out cards. You can also lay out the cards with the answers down and you can call out an answer and then they have to hit or slap a card that matches whatever answer that you just said. But usually quizzing each other is something that you can do uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. They just wanna make sure that they're not the one that 
all the attention is on, what's this answer? What's this answer? Um, that's not very fun for them. But if your child is totally against flashcards, a couple of apps that I always recommend for multiplication are Teach Me Math Facts. I have a video about that one. And Math Bingo. So Teach Me Math Facts only allows you to practice one set of facts at a time. So if you're on the threes, you practice the threes. If you're on the fours, you practice the fours, but you can't mix the threes and the fours, which is why I also recommend Math Bingo, M Multiplication Bingo. It has a setting where you can choose easy, medium, or hard. It even has a setting where you can go all the way up to the 15s if you want that extra challenge. But I'll leave links in the description below for those apps. Something else you can do if you have your child just copy the facts over and over. I know that sounds boring. Some children, this actually works for. Just make sure they're not copied incorrectly. Get your child a gel pen. Let them write with marker. Let them do something different. And last of all, they might respond well to some sort of easy rhyme to remember the answer. Um, I heard a child say something the other day about the fact uh six times eight and then they had some little rhyme that went along with that so that they could remember that it was 48 so if your child remembers things by hearing them that might be an idea an other idea that's visual is with the program math tales in the program math tales they only work with some of the hardest multiplication facts so the number eight will always resemble resemble a snowman the number four always resembles a chair so in these stories they'll say something about a snowman if it has the number eight or something about a chair if it has the number four and your child memorizes basically a very short story like one or two sentences so that they can remember so for example eight times four they say the story miss snowman stood on a chair be eight times four <laughs> to get her three buttons and two mittens and then it shows in the picture a snowman standing on a chair she reaches up on the shelf and she gets three buttons and two mittens now I taught a class on multiplication facts earlier this year and I had children grades four through six in there and one of the things we did every week was we covered four new facts of those difficult ones with the program math tales and I just had the children not only memorize those but I had them draw them too so that may be something you look into doing as well I'll leave a link to that program in the description below last of all number five reassess your child keep track of what they have learned since you first started and make sure you reward instead of making your goal your only goal being learn all the facts, start small and give them an easier to reach goal in the beginning. Your reward might be something as simple as giving your child a chance to go out and go do something or have a friend over, or if you want to use money to motivate your child as well. Those are just a couple of ideas. In our house, we use uh, stickers, but you do what works for your child, what motivates your child, and have some really nice reward at the end when they reach this because truly learning their multiplication facts now is going to save them lots of headaches down the road because they're going to use it all the time in middle school and high school. They're going to use it in all these fraction operations that they do as well. So you don't want to skip over this. Just like this mom wrote, she can't progress any further until her child knows her multiplication facts. But be sure to check out all these uh, programs that I have in the description below. I also have a free download, Five Quick Tips to Immediately Help Your Struggling Reader. So be sure you check that out as well. You can find the Parent Teacher Bridge on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.